welcome back to another Alpha Nerd podcast and discussion. This is your main host, Kyle Wee. Kyle. <clears throat> and with my co-host, per usual, with my gaming side of things, Andrew. Hello. So, Andrew, let's talk about what's new this week. Well, uh, I think the, the biggest news right off the bat would be the delay of Breath of the Wild 2. Still, still not titled, aside from just the two on the end. It was supposed to be out in late 2022, but it uh, was delayed to early 2023, which surprises all zero people. Uh, they hadn't said really anything about the game in a while, aside from it was coming, and the fact that, you know, it, it is now just maybe six months out, with still no details, this was kind of expected. Yeah, I mean, I had a feeling like... They they haven't given us anything yet. They were talking about it was going to be out here soon. Still nothing, still nothing, and then now they're delaying. Which, yeah, I mean that's whatever. fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that because Breath of the Wild was was such a, a, a an incredibly epoch shifting game uh, that came out in, what 2017. Teen. Yep. And so many games in the past five years have used the Breath of the Wild formula to great success. Yes. Uh, and and. I'm okay if the sequel takes its time. Yeah, as long as it's good. Uh, I I think it will be good. I mean, even the worst. All right, we're not going to talk about Zelda 2 or the CD, CDI Zelda games. Oh, but come on. They were great. No, no, they were They not. were awesome. But even the worst <clears throat> mainstream Zelda games haven't been bad. No, I don't. I think the worst one we got in a while was Skyward Sword. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Skyward Sword. I get it. It was to show off the Wii. Uh, the 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 actually the plus. Remember the plus dongle, yes. or whatever it was, motion plus. The motion plus that was a peripheral that you would attach to your controllers to make them not suck. Y- yeah, pretty much. Um, I wasn't a big Skyward Sword fan for a lot of reasons. Um, I I haven't played the re-release on the Switch where they added you know normal sword controls. So I can't really say if it, it improves without its core gimmick because the gimmick was not not great. In my opinion. no, no, they it, it was it was wonky. It was a wonky time. It was a weird time in gaming. Yeah, yeah. I not one of my favorites. Definitely not one of my favorites. But uh, in other gaming news, uh, I saw that Monster Hunter Rise is starting to show off some of its armor sets from the Sunbreak expansion. Uh, yes, I'm really excited for it. Um, they look, they look decent. Now it's a matter of what skills they have. It's true. They're not really going to detail that super much. They're going to, they're going to wait on that. Yeah. The, Uh, the, uh, what's the, what's the giant ape, the new giant ape? I can't think what that stupid thing's name is. Starts with a G. It's like Garalalalalum or something like that. Yeah, hold on a second. Um. I'll look that up real quick. Fair enough. But I like the armor set for that one. You just kind of look like you're a walking castle. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a pretty, a pretty nice design. Unfortunately, I, I'm also pretty sure in Monster Hunter, the best looking armor is always the armor that doesn't go do, with that what doesn't you do. do yeah, anything. it doesn't do anything or it's specifically not for you. You'll right. like it and it'll be like this. Uh, it, Some of the best looking armors for my build are absolutely nothing to do with. Yeah. Uh, in Monster Hunter, every piece of armor has a skill attached. So if you want to look good, that is an entirely separate thing from if you want to play the game well yes uh, unfortunately uh i don't <clears throat> think there's even any like uh transmogrification system in, in video games transmog systems are where you can attach an appearance yes there is there is yeah i for so why don't i remember that it's the uh layer armor that you get okay but you can't turn every piece of armor into yes. layer. you can yes you can make any combination you want to make it look how you want oh i thought it, layered was a specific armor no, no 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 it's um you have to have so many pieces to do it. Okay. And you just build it, and then you can overlay it, your current armor to make it look how you want. All right. That's a much better system, because I'm pretty sure World did not have that. Or at least if it was in there, I don't remember I, it. I never played World. It's fair. It was, I, World I was good. World. World, was, World was a good game. No, I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying I never played it. Well, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, Sunbreak looks like it's going to be really fun. It looks like it's going to add a, a large amount of variety to to Rise, and I'm excited to check out. It, it, when's it come out? June? June thirtieth? It's either oh. June thirtieth or May thirtieth. It's 
one of the two. I'm pretty sure it's June. I, 30th. I thought it was June. So I'm looking forward to that in June. Yes, June thirtieth. June thirtieth. All right. Yes. Twenty twenty two. Yes. Uh, in other things, I've I've played once again a lot of games recently. Yeah. Uh, as is what I do. <clears throat> Uh, I've been kind of chewing through the PlayStation games I've had built up over time. Uh, I want to start with Demon's Souls, the remake. Uh, did you play Demon's Souls originally? This is a rhetorical no. question. I'm not asking you, Kyle. <laughs> no. If if you did play it originally, do you just want to play it again with better graphics? If the answer to that is yes, play the Demon's Souls remake. It is uh, Demon's Souls is the predecessor to all the Souls-style games, which are the kind of now legendary series all about difficulty and skill. Uh, Demon's Souls was the original for the PS3. The IP is actually owned by Sony, which is why they could do a remake without any involvement from, from, from Software, the company that normally makes the Souls games. This was done by Bluepoint Studios, which at the time was a contractor for Sony, and then Sony bought them yeah. after the Demon's Souls remake did well. The remake is weird. They redid all the graphics. Everything performs fantastically. Everything looks great, but they just renamed some of the items, and then they didn't fix any of the problems in the game whatsoever. Don't you love it? It's just odd. Like, you go through it, and you're like, where's this item from the original? Oh, they renamed it. That must mean they changed other things. The answer is no. no. For some reason, they didn't fix any of the really bad fights. They didn't fix any of the exploits. You can still just do all the regular mm. exploits from the original game. Don't not get hit by half the bosses. Uh, they didn't fix really any of the balance issues. But honestly, Demon Souls is a stellar game, even with all of its jank from nearly 20 years ago. And you should play it at least once if you have the opportunity to do so. It is a great game, and I highly recommend it. Just if you've already played it, this one's not particularly necessary. <laughs> uh, the other game I, I played recently on my PlayStation, I am literally almost done i have just the one last thing to do in it is returnal returnal is done by house marquee which is a or maybe house mark i don't know how to pronounce that it's a sony studio it used to be an, an indie studio and sony purchased it way back when and what happened was they just decided to do new IPs. They they don't really do sequels. Sony doesn't really tell them what to do. They just kind of do their own thing. And they came up with this game called Returnal. It is presumably a science fiction horror third-person roguelike shooter, um, which is a weird description. But basically, uh, you play as a science fiction-y space scout named Selene who crash lands on a planet. She goes out and explores the territory, and she finds her own body. She picks up the gun the body had, and then you proceed to move through randomly generated levels. And when you die, you just show back up at your crashed ship with the knowledge that you have done this a bunch of different times. It's creepy. Uh, as, the, as the game goes on, the story gets more and more surreal. And the theme of this alien world is is very geiger -y, like body horror -y. It's not a particularly nice alien planet. None of the aliens look like they're out to have, you know, have a beer with you. They didn't want to turn you into a beer. But uh, so it's a great game. The design of the game is fantastic. It plays up that it's extraordinarily difficult. And it is in the first couple hours. But honestly, I'm not really sure what happened after about the midway point of the game, but they just decided to tone down the difficulty. The The final couple bosses are pushovers, and it's it's a very good game. There is a little bit of disappointment in, in terms of the ending difficulty progression, but they seem to support it really well. They just added basically an expansion pack to it for free. That is uh, the Tower of Sisyphus. It is an endless tower. With a special new boss, it's got new weapons, it's got all this stuff, just just a free patch they decided to add. Uh, very good, and it adds a whole new section to the story as well. I highly recommend it. It's PS5 exclusive, so not a ton of people can actually play it, even now, two years later. <laughs> it's because nobody has one? Yeah, exactly. Um, I lucked out in that aspect, but if you get the opportunity to play it, highly recommend. Uh, if you don't like difficult games, do not purchase it. 
they added a co-op mode. You might think that makes it easier. It doesn't. Co-op is actually more difficult than solo. Don't fall into that trap. Right. So a game I see coming up, and I saw it on the Ninten- the last Nintendo thing where they started introducing the indie game. Mm-hmm. It's called WrestleQuest. Russell Quest. Russell Quest. Russell Quest. Okay. All right. Rouse Dower. I don't. <laughs> um, Is there beer on the sun? Uh, it's an old <laughs> MSD3K episode. So the whole concept is it's a turn-based RPG with as a pro wrestler. Like you go through your career as a pro wrestler. Okay. And uh, like it's a top-down like Final Fantasy, um, more reminiscent of the 16-bit era, and you it looks amazing it just looks so, so is it like a tactics rpg or is it like a final fantasy like a final fantasy rpg where you do like the people's elbow is yeah that, yes. is the people's elbow is that a copyrighted term or a trademark term rather Maybe, <laughs> i don't know if i can I don't say know. that we could say it okay like it's, a, it's not like we're it's not the people's elbow, elbow. it's some people's it's elbow. elbow somebody's yeah exactly some guys. uh so all right, that's really interesting. I had not seen that. So, is there is there like a storyline? Are you like yeah? A- there's like a full story, like full progression. Some of the bosses, like they showed Macho Man Randy Savage is somewhere in there as like a mentor. Uh, John Cena's in there. It, it, it's not actually them, right? It's like their analog. No, no, no. It's like literally just them, like for no reason, like. There's Macho Man. It's awesome. okay. That is literally Macho Man. Man. Like no. I mean, granted, he's not around to really contest that, but uh, still, it's yeah. That that is Macho Man. I'm surprised he doesn't um, have a Slim Jim. In his but hand. yeah, it's like a whole turn-based RPG. Um, when you, you go to submit somebody, you have to perform button prompts to be able to submit them and try to get them to submit. So or, is that part not turn-based? It is. Oh, it's okay. A, it's like when you do like the blitz moves in the old games, where you have to put in like button combinations. And then you do the move for like some of the martial arts guys okay. or the um, from what this one shows is like when you're performing a submission, mm-hmm. you have to try to get it into the green. Oh, I to see. To try to okay. tap them so out like while little... the other guy has to put in button prompts to get to the ropes to be let go. I'm really looking forward to that because I feel like it's going to be silly and fun. I mean, it's. I'm going to get hate for this, but it's about pro wrestling, so it's going to be a bit silly, silly no matter no what. No matter what. Uh, yeah, it looks really charming. That's not something I usually use with pro wrestling, but it it's adorable. The pixel graphics that you've shown me here are very well done. Yeah. And yeah, that looks like it's just going to be a fun little yeah, game. Like I'm looking forward to playing it. When was it Do you know when it comes out? Um, I'll have to recheck, but it was just I saw it out of the the showcase and they didn't really give too much on it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really look into it too hard. Mm-hmm. I was just waiting until there's more out before I started looking too hard. Because I was too busy looking at Tokyo Ghostwire. What is the Ghostwire? Yeah, Before I, you I'm, say it. I'm going to ask you right now. What is the Ghostwire? Still doesn't say. But I have How do you more. not know already? It's Because I haven't played it yet. I got stuck in Tales of Basiria as well as... Tell me about Tales of Basiria. All right. So, as we said last time, it's a very anime game. It, it's not very. It is. It, it is, is an anime It game. is an anime game. Yeah. It's very tropey. Um, I'm still enjoying it. I'm st- like, like I said, I really enjoy the combat. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm about eight hours in, but it feels like I'm still at the very beginning of the game. So an anime style game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So J- have, have you JRPG. met RPG? Have you met like a little kid with a very whiny voice? Yes. Uh, whoa. What? In an anime game? game no yeah. way. And then, you know, they have the trope uh, annoying animal character. Oh, no. Oh, these ones are so extra obnoxious. Are they're, they worse than the Xenoblade a pat up yes. or whatever their pom poms? The pom pom they're way worse because they're cat things, like the weird little cat things with a cat's like they're cats, and then they put a cat pajamas over their body and they so, everything they talk is in cat puns. And it's all right, that's that's dreadful. Too much. It is hard to listen pick, to. Pick one of those three. Or no, pick two of those three. That'd be an okay combination. But all three of them together does not seem correct. What is this? Um, Ultimate. Oh, this is the wrestling. This, this, there's page. It's their page. I, I handed Andrew my phone to take a look at some of the page while I'm talking about Tales of Basira. So we're getting into the, you know, the the meat and pe- potato, the meat and potatoes of the story, mm. which is so far, you know, she's out for revenge against this dude. She's going to do whatever she can to get revenge mm-hmm. from the guy who betrayed her. 
Mm-hmm. And it's it's going to go into, I guarantee you, without without a second doubt in my mind, because the whole beginning of it, she's really ruthless and like using people to get her way to manipulate the situation so she can get her objective done. I guarantee you here in the next mm, chapter or two of the game, it's going to be like, Oh, I feel bad about all the decisions I made. Look, what yeah, the, 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 you've, yeah, you've played an anime game. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've watched enough anime and played enough anime games to know that's going to happen. Um, like I said, the combat is so fluid. Well, it's a tales it's, game. The yeah. combat's always been good in a tales game. Yes. Um. Other than that, I downloaded Halo onto my Steam account. Which Halo? The finite one or the infinite one? Infinite one. Okay, the Halo Infinite. Yeah. Okay. I'll download Finite later. Okay, all right. So did I'm you start at, playing that? Not yet. Oh, okay. I was actually going to address you about playing that at some point. Is it cross system play? I believe it is. I will now address you, Kyle, and it is in fact cross play. Sweet. So that means I could play from my computer. That is correct. Without having to have Xbox Live. Sweet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you don't have to have Xbox no, Live on no. the PC version. That's the reason why I downloaded the computer. Um, other than that, I've been just still grinding out uh, League of Legends once in a while mm-hmm. and Apex Legends. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to get you playing that again at some point. I do need to play Apex Legends. I really enjoyed Apex Legends for a while, and I kind of tapered off, and I, I don't really know why I did. But I just saw they released the next-gen upgrades for it, so yes. that on the Xbox Series, well, it's just the Xbox Series X and S, and the PS5, you now have all the fancy technological innovation stuff. So it, it's finally a current gen game. Yes. Uh, we, we, people still use the next gen there, but it's been two years. It's not next gen anymore. It's current gen. It's current gen. So I'm Apex to... is a very good game, though. I highly recommend just trying out Apex. It's one of the best free to play games on the market, hands down. Yeah, uh, and it's the only battle royale that I like. Every other battle royale, no nothing yeah no i'm right there with you everyone's like play Fortnite." i'm like no i have a life so uh do you want to get down to the big thing that i know you want to talk we have way too much show ahead of us not yet not yet we gotta save it for the last half i can talk like two hours about this i know we can and we're going to talk a good half an hour on okay fine or maybe 20 minutes but um one of the things I've been getting an itchy finger about mm. is I kind of want to go back and play Red and Blue, like original Pokemon Red and Blue. Okay, I mean I can see that. I don't I don't see that being good anymore because I, I I played a lot of Pokemon Blue right. back in the day. So did and, I. But I mean, I looking just... back, I'll be like, that's nostalgic, but yes. I don't think it's necessarily good. Yeah, fair enough. But I just want to play it because I've been just itching to see the old sprites that look nothing. So here's a like, here's a valid question uh, based on how Nintendo works. Where can you buy and play Red and Blue? Um, their eShop for that was on the DS stuff for a while, but I don't know if that's that's still closing on. down. That's the, closing down. Yeah. So you can buy it and then you have it on your your not DS. your Switch. I was gonna your say DS. not your Switch. Yeah. Uh, you can also buy it for your Switch. It's available on the. I believe so. Really, I didn't think they had a original Game Boy emulator up there. No, it's kind of like when you just buy it and download it. It won't be at like. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was on there when I was looking. No, I didn't think they had it available. Yeah, I might, I might did they be. ever? Did they ever remake Red and Blue? Was it yeah, like yeah, fire instead fire of red, red, fire red and leaf green. Oh, leaf green. So instead okay. of doing blue, they decided to do leaf green. Okay, well, uh, thanks Nintendo. You removed the best one. <laughs> okay, what <laughs> blue was the best one? That Blastoise on the cover. Yeah, fair enough. Um, it is fair enough, right? The one I also wouldn't even want to go back and play is gold, gold and silver. Mm-hmm. Those were my favorites. Gold and silver were really, really good. Um, those are the I. What came after gold and silver? Was it ruby and sapphire? I was gonna say ruby and sapphire. Gold and silver were the last ones I played for a while, and then I kind of I skipped ruby and sapphire. I think I bought uh, was it black and white after ruby and sapphire? Black and white was weird. I don't like black and white. I, I think I had, I don't know which one. I think I the storyline was just really bad and it just bothered me. Uh, and then after black and white was what? Black or, and white too. Was it black and white too? Yeah. I missed a lot of Pokemon in there. Yeah, you did. I, I last, the, the other, the one I played after all those was uh diamond or you, pearl. I thought you, diamond and pearl came out before those. 
Wait, what? No. So it was, it was Ruby and Sapphire. So the, or, the order is red and blue. Okay. Then gold and silver. Or yellow. Yellow is in there. Uh, it's, it's a, okay, whatever. What, it, there's, yep. a, there's always that in-betweeny one that's a little upgraded. I was going to say, yellow person. was a big deal. So there was red, red and blue, blue. Yellow. Blue, sh- Talk about generation wise. Fine. I don't care about the in between games that are slightly better versions of oh, those. Okay, games. okay, keep going. So then there was gold and silver, mm-hmm. then ruby and sapphire. Uh huh. After ruby and sapphire was diamond and pearl. No, was yes. it? Okay, I did play pearl. I did play pearl. After diamond and pearl was, was black and white? Was black and white. And then black and white two. Then black and white two. Uh huh. Never played those. Um,. After all them was X and Y. I had Y. I think I played Y. Oh, I didn't think y. it was very good. Oh, it was so good. No, I the storyline was poop, but the game itself was good. They added with the whole three D environment. It was fully customized characters. It was, um, was it based in like France? Was that where it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, not a big francophile myself, so yeah. So all the Pokemon going wee wee. Um, after those, that's was yes in French. Sun and Moon. Never played those. I didn't go near them. Really? Well, I started to play one. Was Sun and Moon where they introduced the Aloha Pokemon? Yeah. yeah okay. The Alola. Okay. Uh, oh, Alola. They didn't want to use the word Aloha. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's where they introduced that. Okay. Was that where they introduced? When did they use Megaforms? X and Y. Oh, was it X and Y? X and Y. Is I, I don't really remember that. That's why I like Mega it. Snorlax. Yeah. It's awesome. And then Golden uh Ruby uh Sun and Moon. And then there was like a Sun and Moon 2. Was there? Yes. Oh. What they did a remake of Ruby and Sapphire, didn't they? Yes. Uh not yes. Uh they were for the DS. Mm. Um they were remakes. Um well, this, these these games up until here were all for either the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, or the DS, DS slash 3DS. And then they after after they did Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I think they did the remakes for Ruby and Sapphire, mm-hmm. which I had it, because it was Omega Waylord, Omega Sapphire, and something Ruby, or Omega Ruby and something Sapphire. It was Omega Ruby and. Yeah, what was the Sapphire one? Mm. No, we're not going to look it up. We're, we're not going to do we're it. We're going to leave it. We're, we're just going to leave it. Um, and then they did uh, Sword and Shield. That's right. The uh, the British one? Yes. It's yeah. based in England. And I love it. It's so, so good. It was, it you, was, it was enjoyable. Do you catch the Pokemon with tea and crumpets? Back, there's actually a tea and crumpets Pokemon. <laughs> that's terrifying it's awesome <laughs> that's absolutely terrible how do you know your breakfast isn't that pokemon right so maybe it's like posing there was and that's where they introduced uh gigamax and dynamax which is dynamax was what a, a 1970s video player uh-huh. right I yes think, yeah so it was just you know pokemon become kaijus even more so uh okay the, um, the traditional British kaiju. Now there were some really, really good designs for Pokemon in that. Well, I imagine uh, they had a lot of like little mustaches and bowler caps. Uh, and... Weezing did. Weezing had the top hat. Oh my god! And it was also a chimney. Why do I make these jokes if they're <laughs> just real life? <laughs> yeah, right? It turns out that these aren't amusing. They uh, actually I loved occurred. It. it was so good. Um, there was some really good Pokemon, and because it was open world, it was kind of it was the precursor to uh, Legend Arceus. How Legend Arceus set up Legend Arceus, yes, Legend of Arceus. Well, Legend of Arceus is, is also very different of a game. Yes, but I'm saying like how the map set up in that, where you could wander around and go through the grass, and you see the Pokemon moving around. Are you saying you couldn't enter the grass in any other Pokemon game? Because uh, that but, is a complete. But I'm saying lie. is having them out and about and seeing them walking around and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. And then you nail them right in the head with a Pokeball. That's kind of what you do in. It's just minding its own business. Yeah, you just smack um, it right in the head with a Pokeball. There, there, and there was some like my favorite is Inteleon, which is the water type starter. Mm-hmm. Um, it is so awesome of a Pokemon because it its final thing is it becomes a sniper lizard. So it has a gun. It has a finger gun. 
that shoots water. I don't know how I feel about that. And it's also like a reference to like a spy. It's like a you know what I have. I have a lot of deep moral quandaries with Pokemon as a series and, and a whole. The but bon- adding the- firearms to them doesn't seem any better. like it's not. It's it's just his finger. Wait, a finger gun is still a weapon. I will have. Yeah, I will whatever. point out, especially in the hands of a Pokemon. Literally in the hands of a Pokemon. You're right. Yeah. So I, I don't think that improves. Oh, well, that doesn't help anything because Blastoise had literally a cannon on its back, and it could. It All right, t- you, you stop coming after my boy Blastoise. Okay. All right, and then it also in its Pokedex entry it talked about how it could pretty much just cut you in half with its blaster. Yeah. So Pokemon, like I said, there's some there's some weird ethical, moral, and genuinely disturbing things in the Pokemon world. Oh yeah. Uh, All the ghost types kill kids. <laughs> All of them. No if ands or buts. Uh. Even, wait, not the ghost candelabra. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. I mean, it's they a fire all, hazard. They all wait. Is kidnap- ghost flame actual flame, or is it? Fl- it is. Is it the ghost of, of a, flame? a flame? Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I I now want to find that out. <laughs> this but, flame died. Um, the fire starter is a bunny that turns into a soccer hooligan, which is awesome. It's the end state the, of actually every the, British the, Pokemon. The, <laughs> the monkey turns into the grass type turns into a drummer is that called like, Rillaboom, and it has a giant wooden drum. Wait, are, it, is, is the UK known for its production of drummers? Because I know about Ringo, and I wouldn't be proud of that. No, I wouldn't be either. And then, like I said, Inteleon is the water one that it's like a like super secret agent guy. Oh, yeah, you gotta have a James. It kind of looks, Pokemon. yeah, it looks like yeah, James yeah, Bond. Yeah, and then when it Dynamax, it makes a water. Hand gun, it shoots like a sniper. It's awesome. Terrible precedence. Yeah. Ter- well, terrible precedence. Yeah, okay. So I'm just saying, terrible precedence. When Pokemon goes to the Balkans, one of them is going to have an AK-47. Right. It's going to be terrifying. All right. So. Pokemon. There's, Kosovo. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of Pokemon games. And I'm looking forward to the new ones. Where it's. Was it Violet and. What's the other one? The new Pokemon coming out. Violet and. Scarlet and Violet or Violet and something. Is it Violet and Scarlet? I don't know. Uh, they announced them already. Yeah, I know. They announced the colors. and like I, Arceus were... was like two hours old, and they were like, hey, we got more Pokemon games coming. Yeah, right? Yeah. You, you need them. I think it's Scarlet and Violet. And what they showed the, the they showed the starters off. Yeah, which I'm excited for. And all the weird people that are obsessed with the cat. What, what, what Scarlet and Violet are... Um... Yeah, Scarlet and Violet. You're right. Yeah. There, what what setting is that? Uh, I believe, from what I was seeing, it kind of looks like, like Spain, okay. the south, the South America. Oh, South America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because a lot of the houses have like the tiling, the ah, uh, the traditional South American tile, um, terracotta, the terracotta style tiling. That's fair. And they all kind of look like. I think the, I think it was actually mentioned that it was like South America. South America I think. <laughs> And there's like a lot of stuff that like reminds me of it. Like there's a there's one that Quetzalcoatl is just a Pokemon now. I wouldn't be surprised, would you? Isn't one of the legendaries based off Quetzalcoatl? Uh, currently, no. Are you sure? But I believe we're gonna get one here soon. Okay. If if not, we will be. It's gonna be just a giant bird with an ice cream. I just cone wonder on the be head. another just, just another sombrero Pokemon like uh, the Some, pineapple. Uh, all right. Sombreros are not native to that to, to South America as a whole. I know, but unless this is Mexico, we're talking about the xenophobic Japanese. So <laughs> they always do things a little I, unnecessary. I have not noticed um, an incredible amount of xenophobia in the in the Pokemon games. Don't give me that look. What am I missing? Well, let's let's go from the very beginning, Jinx. Okay, that's just racism. <laughs> yeah. There is a big difference between xenophobia um, and racism. Let's see what else uh, other good ones. I can't think of that stupid one that's the uh, the pineapple that has the some the maracas in it. It's not uh, executor, is it? No, no, no. It's not executor. Because um, the heads Pokemon are kind of like pineapple shaped. Pineapple. Okay, so you got me on Jinx, but what what else are we what else are we going with here? Uh, there's a bunch of them. There's crazy ones. Oh, Hallelucha, which is a luchador bird that wears a mask. I mean, you weren't around for that. You weren't. I, I was gonna that. say. Plus, I mean, 
it's a luchador. Those are real things. Ludicolo. Ludicolo. Ludicolo? You never saw Ludicolo before? No, what's Ludicolo? It's literally a giant pineapple with a sombrero that dances around with maracas. All right, that actually sounds adorable. Oh, he's awesome. He was actually really good for a while. Oh, he's adorable. Right? Okay. That, that's him. not xenophobic. Oh, come on. There is no level of cultural appropriation for that adorable little guy right there. Um, There's a couple other really wonky ones. I'll have to look them up, but there were some really... All right. Seriously, There though. were some gems. Yeah, j- j- Jinx is a problem. <laughs> like that. Jinx was yeah. never a problem. Jinx was awesome. <laughs> Jinx was uh, awesome. Yeah. You can yeah. definitely see where they got the inspiration for that. for that. That's that. Yeah, that, old, that's just racist. The old Jim Crow oh cartoons. Oh gosh, Ugh, that's so funny. Yeah, it's something. Uh, but yeah, uh, so it, it's South America and or possibly Mexico, which is not South America. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it just because I I like the new starters. You know, at least they didn't do Pokemon Russia. <laughs> that would have just been I can't so wait. badly. Timed. We're gonna get it. We're going to get it. I guarantee you. Not right now. Everyone gets the same starter. Probably about. <laughs> <laughs> right? Everyone everyone gets the same starter and you will like it. Yeah. It's a beat. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to make some kind of borscht Pokemon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, gosh. That, that, oh, I'm all about this. That's. That that'll just be utterly terrifying. Not to sound like a bad person or anything. I'm not <laughs> yeah, that's that's just gonna be. They're gonna do it eventually because they're gonna run out of world regions. Yes, but uh, that's I'm I'm not really looking for. Uh, what what would that be? Pokemon what? What 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 would that what, what would like Russia and the Balkan area be? Pokemon, you should probably leave Pokemon there gray. and go to a better country. Pokemon gray. Oh, Pokemon, no no Pokemon not gray. gray yeah. And Pokemon slightly grayer. Pokemon. It's right in front of us. Pokemon Hammer and Sickle. Oh my god! Boom! That was right there. there. Yes. And the only thing that would make it better is they played the Russian anthem. Russian national anthem, like right at the beginning. Of, do, do, I actually do, don't do, think. Do, uh, do. I actually don't think anybody can afford to play the Russian national anthem Fair anymore enough. because Fair enough. you know they have no money. All right, so we hit <laughs> we hit the bottom of the hour. So it's time to. Talk about the big thing. Is that really called the bottom of the hour? I believe so, because the, the the minute hand's facing down. Oh, you know what? I have I've always heard hour, top of the hour. hour. Yeah, I've never known that there was a bottom of the hour. I believe so. I'll right. have to relook it up now. No, but, no, um, I think you're, you're probably right. So. All right. The last this, of us. This is this is. Th- there's not going to be an, an end to this where we agree on. Something. Oh no, I wasn't expecting to agree. But um, all right. So I did finish the Last of Us Part Two. I had mentioned, uh, was it two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Okay, I finished it like the day after. <laughs> but uh, I had mentioned that I was playing through the Last of Us Part Two, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, even after not being a fan of the first game. And for longtime listeners. Uh, Kyle was shocked and appalled by my statement. Appalled's a little stretching. That's, a, that's he was a he was word. a Kyled rather. Oh, yes, a Kyle. I'll uh, go with Kyle. And he did not. Uh, he was like, "Why? <laughs> like, just, just why?" Look. All right. Now that you beat it, yes, it's time for us to have our debate. Okay. Do we want to start with the first game or the second game? <sighs> Ooh, man. So, because part of my argument has to do with the first game and the difference between the two. Well, I mean, it's vastly different between the two games. Know, duh, but, um, Don't you duh me. Okay, so we'll just start with the second one. Okay, all right. So after you beat it, spoiler warnings, by the way. Yeah, there's, there's, um, there is nothing going to be spared in the conversation of, the, of so, this game. You got to start with Abby. So, so yeah, Ellie mid- got beat down. Midway through the game, you, uh, you finish Ellie's story, and finish air quotes and then you move over to abby uh the 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 rhythm of the game is there are three days in the ruins of seattle you play through the three days as ellie and then it switches over and you start at day one with abby and it moves through those three days they're parallel stories yes and you find you you basically see both store the, the whole story from both sides yes um and I really didn't think there was a weakness in Abby's story, aside from the fact that 
her motivation is not as driven as Ellie's because Ellie's is a very focused well, uh, revenge. Uh, her her first motivation in the game was very focused. Correct, correct, but it's already passed. Yeah, but now that we're past that, her other motivation was weird and kind of out of left field. She wanted that dude. Yeah. But it, she that was her motivation. Yeah, she wanted it was, that it was dude. Bad. It wasn't yeah. good, though. It was just really like, blah. Like it was a stupid love triangle where he knocked up some other girl. So and so they, and I didn't getting see ready to it, leave their little colony. I didn't see it as blah because the the gentleman in question, Owen, a had been a friend of hers since childhood. Because you start Abby's section as playing her during the last part of Last of Us Part One. one. Yes, the day that Ellie arrives at the Firefly Hospital. Yes, and. You know, it shows that her and Owen have known each other for years, that he's older than her and has kind of taken her under his wing as a good friend and served with her dad. Yeah, but at parts of it, they had a previous relationship. Yes, it's mentioned at one point that they did date for a while and it didn't work out. Correct, but it's it's past the I believe it's past the events of the Firefly Hospital. Yes, it's between the Firefly it's between the Firefly uh, Hospital uh, and the events at the stadium yes. where the Washington Liberation Front is. Yes. So one thing I really like about The Last of Us Part Two, and it's not just about I should say one of the things I like is it's not just about Abby and Ellie. They are vehicles for a bigger story because it's. It's talking about violence and humanity. So Ellie and Abby are personalized violence. Yes. Abby in form of reciprocal vengeance. Yes. But when you zoom out a little bit and go to a little bit higher level, you see the Washington Liberation Front, who is a kind of military survivalist organization that's billed as being incredibly like advanced they're they're the real future of humanity like they're the good guys but they are an incredible like harsh military yeah like their opposites uh referred to in the game as scars are the seraphites who are portrayed as violent religious fanatics yes uh and that is a portrayal that sticks for a while until you run into people like lev in abby's section of the game and you find out more about the seraphites and it does one thing that i really enjoy which is it points out that even at a higher level there is always a circle of violence yes because the Seraphites and the WLF fight each other. And in fact, in the end, they basically annihilate each other. They kill so many of each other at the same time that they become like shells of themselves. Yeah. And they really ruin one of the best chances for humanity to survive in that city. Yeah, but they, no, people can't get along. That That's it. That's the point. That That on an individual level, you at some point have to stop. Otherwise, everyone dies. Like, it's just always about vengeance. It's a reciprocal state. And in a lot of American media, vengeance is portrayed as a just a positive. Uh, it's like, oh, he's out for revenge. He's going to get it. And then he's going to ride off into the sunset. Right. But that's really not how it works. And that's pointed out in the opening of Last of Us Part 2, Two yeah. where Abby just murders joel that's her vengeance but it doesn't make her feel better in the rest of the game no and all it does is it ends up killing everyone she cares about yeah. even more yeah so same with ellie yeah so this is the part that lost me mm-hmm. is where i feel the game should have all ended. right correct they never describe why Abby's arms are that jacked, but you can just assume that she works out a lot. Yeah, well, that's duh. No, the the whole everything after they had their first scuffle and Ellie got wrecked straight straight up. She got wrecked. She was fighting a losing battle from the start. Because well, as soon as you control Abby in that boss fight, you know what's going to happen to Ellie. Like if you're yeah. playing Abby during the boss fight, Ellie is actually a boss fight in Last of Us Part, part 2. It's not a particularly hard boss, but I thought it was neat that she uses all the weapons that she had. I just thought that was cool. Like, she'll, like, 
put down a trip mine and then walk right away with the bow. And I'm like, oh, I remember doing that stuff like hours ago. Yeah, right. So what I'm saying is. Well, the... Lev convinced Abby to leave Ellie and Dana alive. Yes. Because he knows that violence wasn't the answer. No. But what I'm saying is um, the part that got me is the very beginning of the game. Yeah. Joel got murked. Yes, he did. His brother. Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Was like, hey. I understand why they killed Joel. We shouldn't go after them. It's number one. It's not smart because they're part of a group, a much bigger group than us. So and number two, he goes, I know what my brother did. And, you know, I'm not surprised any of this happened. Uh, but then he goes to seek revenge on behalf of Ellie to keep Ellie from going. Well, he actually becomes consumed by it. You, you'll find you, – I, I, you saw that later in the game when it's all said and done. Abby beat Ellie. Ellie and Dana – into the dirt. Ellie and Dana go back to the farmstead. Ellie has PTSD now. Yeah. Well, she already did. She already clearly had PTSD, PTSD. from watching Joel get beaten to death and – but it, it manifests pretty violently in her day-to-day life. And unfortunately, no one seems to recognize it, which, A, is a big is a problem. I mean, the world's ruined. Uh, PTSD treatment is probably not on yeah, the Yeah, psychology is not on the... Um, but it, it, it devours her, even in a life that should be ideal for her. And you see it do the same thing to Joel's brother, Tommy, a man who in the first game was very pacifistic wasn't he like not no he, he, he didn't want to engage outside he, he, he of, just wasn't going to seek problems c- correct yeah but what what bothered me is is i'm shocked he didn't die i really thought he was gonna die, die. in the cut i thought yeah I thought like, tommy I, was, he got shot in the face yeah like. i thought tommy was gone but i didn't like tommy's arc where now he is consumed by revenge because he got shot in the face because he was no, crippled. No, 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 no. He, that's what got him. He became obsessed with it because he was crippled. He it wasn't even about Joel anymore. That's that's not why it's in the game. It doesn't. He doesn't mention that at all. He talks about he has. They have to finish this because it, it was. He treats it as something that is in progress. By being shot and not killed, it's not done for him. Yeah, it's not over. He he wasn't upset that he was that he was partially like he can't use his legs correctly anymore his face is kind of messed up he he wasn't really upset about that he was upset that it wasn't done there's there's a part in the game i believe it's joel who says he does stuff until it's finished Hmm. Uh, i think he uses that statement when he addresses what he did at the firefly hospital yeah and he's like i i i finished it i did it until it was done and you see Tommy get consumed by that idea that it's not done. And that's actually a really interesting progression of character from the guy who just wants to protect Ellie from the cycle of revenge to the guy that perpetuates the cycle of revenge. revenge. And I thought that was a very subtle commentary on just how corrosive violence can be. And, like I said, I feel like they should have ended the game there. It's I think, a weird false end. You're right. Yes. It is a weird and that's fake what bothered out. me. And then the everything after the rattlers. Yeah. yeah, everything. That's what ruined the game for me. Is everything past that point? If they would have just left it that Ellie's scarred for life, mm-hmm. and she's you know she's scarred for life. They could have dropped it into a third game where they have the whole Rathers thing. From what I have heard about what happened to Naughty Dog during the development of Last of Us Part Two, there's not. Th- no one wanted to do a third game. <laughs> no, because it was a travesty. It was yeah, they, all over the place. It was I, so bad. I want to. I want to go on the record and say that while The Last of Us Part Two, I think, is a phenomenal game that deserves all of its rewards. What what Neil mm. Druckmann and the company did to the employees there in terms nice of of just pure pure grind was a travesty so so i i understand your concern there because that is a clear false ending yes as soon as and ellie's happy air quotes in her life her she she can't get over the specter of joel because and the game does a good job of driving that screw in every time you think she's past it it shows you a flashback that you're like oh yes it but I, I i just i i could have left it that it was just the whole them all like they clearly got beat. It wasn't even like a 
they had a fighting chance. You're talking about the Rattlers? No, I'm, get... talk, I'm just going still back to the, like you said, Tommy was perpetuating violence. Correct, he was. Like, yeah. I don't, for me, is I don't get that because it's not like you were close to getting your revenge on them. They, hey, I'm gonna Abby point out, wrecked them. I am going to point out that Abby had one friend still alive <laughs> by the time she gets to the yes, theater. But I'm saying when Abby got involved and they finally went after Abby to take her out. Oh, yeah. She, she, she dominated four people. That is correct. She, well, she isolated Tommy. She, she got him. And then Jesse and Ellie bust into the room and she just killed Jesse straight out. Yeah, he took out. one right to the face. Yep. So who's the, well, Dina. Dina doesn't. Dina she, doesn't she, count. I, yeah, she's she, too busy she, being pregnant. <laughs> she was very sick at that point in time. So I don't, <laughs> but I don't was, count her as then, an actual force. And then Ellie there. just got yes. beat like a dog. That is correct. And, and I feel like. But here's the one thing. When you get beat like a dog. Usually you don't end it too much there. If you are yes, that you do. passionate. No, no. As somebody who knows violence and who has committed violence. Has has someone you know been beaten to death in front of you? No. Well, but there's a slight any difference kind of here. violence. Like I've you you you've you've seen me. At well, my yes, own I've work. seen you throw people out. It's a thing. Is no matter how passionate you are, if you take that severe of a beating, like a non, it was a non fight. It was like they stood no chance against Abby. Most people are demoralized. They don't have the urge to go back in a fight. Most well, of the time when people want to go back into a fight, it's where they stood a chance, hmm. where there was a chance they could win. In that fight, so Ellie stood no chance against Abby. The one thing you're doing is isolating the fight and not the things around it. Because Abby the, also killed Jesse. Like, they're... That is a consistent theme of yes. reciprocal violence. violence. Yes. I'm saying that the theming for the whole thing was fine. Yeah. But what I'm saying as far as like a narrative goes. Well, it, she's not going to stop. You, she, she is not mm. going to. It's it's like I said, the PTSD combined with all the flashbacks. That's what drives her until at the end fight in the ocean with Abby when she finally lets go because she knows she's the monster now. Yeah. And she was, she was barely winning that fight too. No, she wins that fight pretty hard. No, yes, no, no, no. It's as seriously, a whole, but still, no, she no. was still struggling against a woman who's been strung up to well, a cross. She also had for her, like what three months? No, three three days. So no, three there's days. no way it was three days. Because no, it was three days. No, they literally say they she tried to escape and they put her up there a day or two ago. That's what the prisoners say. I that for as much muscle mass as she lost, there's no way that was three days. She was in prison for three months. Yeah, as I was gonna say, it was a it was longer than three months because no, how long? How far months. along was uh, Dana? She was only like in her first trimester at the end of that. <sighs> she was only in her first trimester because it was still uh, morning sickness so and that stuff. You got to remember in that timeline <laughs> that Ellie and Dana went home, and Abby and Lev lived in a ship on the coast. They they didn't get to Santa Barbara until later. Until later, it was it was like a there was like a seven month period between the Abby Ellie fight and when Abby gets grabbed. Yeah, and then it, she's there for three to four months, and then she was put on the what are the pillars? They called it the pillars. Yeah, which is basically crucifixion without the arms out. Yeah. you're just tied to a post. Um, she was put on the pillars. The, the prisoners say like two three days before because she tried to escape. Yeah. So she lost all the muscle mass from her imprisonment mm. with the Rattlers. The Rattlers are um, are portrayed as a a slaver gang yes. in the Santa Barbara area, well known for its slaver gangs, and they they're cruel, they're horrible, and they're the only enemy in the game that you really feel absolutely nothing about doing Marking bad things them, yeah. to because they, they're they just horrible go. people. They gotta go. Um, but no, so Ellie in that fight, she has like internal bleeding or something because she she took that uh tree branch right into the side when she th got in the trap yeah it stabs her right in like her and then she got area. like her fingers bitten off and yes yeah, she got two fingers bitten off so she wasn't doing too hot abby was 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 hung on that post for three days mm -hmm. and love was almost dead but at the end it uh, that is not a fight 
like as soon as you get through as soon as you deal the first couple of hits abby just has no coordination she just like kind of yeah. runs at you and screeches because she, she was star for how long she oh was... yeah yeah well that's that's the point ellie's pushing her to do something that she doesn't have any drive for anymore like she just doesn't care as long as lev survives in this case because lev's the last thing abby has yeah period so i, I just... understand i understand the false ending there is in your opinion, a bad narrative. I yeah. get that. And I just, the, the, like, I don't know. Every time I just, I can't, I can't agree with that. Game. I did not like it. Cause it was just, as you said, the cycle of violence, making horrible people more horrible. So yeah, the, the, it works on a lot of levels because it works on the personal level there, but you also see that cycle continue in higher power structures with the yes. WLF and the Seraphites. Yes. And you even find out now, in the game that the Seraphites were actually pacifistic, really, a lot, until their prophet got killed by the WLF, and some elders got in that were like, hey, by the way, you can use guns, and we should be more violent. Yeah. So, the reason why I feel like that's not as good as a narrative story as the first one is, I felt Joel was way more of a flushed out human character than Ellie and this like ellie in the first game was a very fleshed out character this was just a crappy person being crappy doing more crappy things just to be crappy for me no, i don't agree with the that. first game was joel mm. be, was a broken man well he is he was very much broken after the loss of sarah yes the and then beginning. and then he gets ellie as a basically a proxy child and at the end he can't let go and that causes problems i think it took i think it took a very good I, turn what What's up? nothing uh mike oh. was clipping a little bit okay i think it so i get it joel is a really good character and his parts in last of us 2 are very well done the parts in the hotel the parts at his cabin the yeah. dance those are all extremely well done yeah. And but I don't I'm think Ellie's a bad the, the, character. I do. I do. Now, in the second game, she's not as good as a character as she was in the first game. For me. Well, she's not a child anymore yeah. in the second game. But what I'm saying is the reason why I feel narratively the first one's better is, like I said, Joel was a broken man. He got this situation forced on him. Mm. He, was just, he was just trying to live out his days. He was just trying to live whatever life he had left, doing whatever he felt like doing, mm. being a smuggler, just to survive. There was no hope for him. He had no interest in life. And then as it went on, he became attached to Ellie. Mm -hmm. And when he was going to uh, lose that attachment by her dying in that operation, he snapped and he could not do it a second time. He could not lose so he, he points time. out in Last of Us Part 2 during the flashback right at the very end of the game that illustrates to Ellie that how far she's gone away from from what she should be doing. Uh, he mentions that he wouldn't take back what he did. No. And there's there's actually – there is another theme in the game which is Ellie never has choices. So in Last of Us Part 1, Ellie doesn't have a choice. No. Uh, Joel takes away her agency in every particular case. He has to take her here. She has to die. She doesn't get a choice of whether or not to die. Um, and that's pointed out in Last of Us Part 2 when the doctor, uh, Abby's father, like tells the leader of the Fireflies that, hey, she, Ellie's got to die for this. He at no point actually answers the question when asked of would he do that if it was her own, his own daughter. He doesn't answer that question. Yeah. Abby comes in and tells him, yeah, dad, I would do it. I'd save everybody. But that scene is there to juxtapose the fact that Ellie never got that choice. No one woke her up and was like, hey, this is what's going to happen. Or do you want to do this? Like they because they, they wanted to take that choice away from her. And even when Joel killed all those people, he didn't give her a choice. No, she, he forced that situation on her. And yes. he then that turned in the last of us. Part and two. that's, that's what I feel was good is that I just did. I, I could not get myself around. Like I liked most of it. Mm -hmm. It's just that section. I can understand if you don't, if you don't, 
if that story doesn't speak to you in any way, shape, or form, then it's not going to. The rest of the game's not going to make any 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 emotional impact or weight no. or anything like that. And the ending is also what got me. Like ugh, I rolled. My... <laughs> the ending reminded me of where she shows game. up to an empty house. Yeah, because Dana left. Dana yeah. left. Yeah. Like my question is, where did she go? That's actually a pretty good question. I, it's supposed to show that violence leaves you empty and yes, ends but with that's nothing, really but... good. she had a house. A fully functional farm. All right. A, I'm going to point out one thing that having a house in this post apocalypse isn't actually a high bar anymore. Anyone could get a house. But, <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying. Of a house. Who it helped was, her move? Yeah, <laughs> like, who helped, who her, helped move? her move? Who, she, who took her stuff? Like, she took all her stuff. Yes. The ending, she left the, a guitar for <laughs> The ending with the empty house and the guitar playing that Ellie can no longer play because of the missing fingers is symbolic of what you get at the end of that journey you get nothing and you are irrevocably scarred for life yeah you 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 just you essentially did this to yourself yeah um and yeah that theme is poignant but yes there is a there is a weird thing there where it's like dana wasn't gonna move any of that stuff (laughs) like Wait, with where, a baby where'd all the where'd all the what goats go like the, the, everything everything was gone and it, even if okay even if she was like hey i'm done with ellie i the only thing i guess is some people from jackson must have come out and helped. my her. thing is she should have just took all her stuff and moved it out why would she give up a functional homestead in the apocalypse i don't know i don't i don't <laughs> have that answer uh my if i I, obviously, the answer there is it's more poignant for Ellie to return to an empty home. Yes. But from a logical and perspective. And that's the other thing I didn't like. Let's beat you over the head with the metaphor stick. Well, yes. That part is a little bit beady. The rest of the game is a pretty good illustration. And for a genre that doesn't necessarily do subtlety in any way, shape, or form. And don't don't argue with me that Pokemon is some weird like social commentary because it's not. It's it about is. it's about animals. floating ice cream creatures yeah, about, that about the abuse of animals. The I mean, is it really? I don't know if it's abuse at this point. They yeah, seem no. to they seem to enjoy it, right? There's another word so, for that, but so yeah. All right, we, I, we, we've definitely came to our conclusion. We're never going to agree on this. <laughs> Correct. Yes, and I understand where you're coming from on but, this, yeah, but I didn't want to sit there and go, "Oh, it sucked." Without you finishing it, no, you suck, Kyle. Yeah, you, <laughs> without you know, without you finishing it and like yeah, seeing yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. what threw me off. While my opinion has not changed whatsoever, I I do definitely see where you are coming from in your dislike of part two. And I'm not going to claim part two is the best game for everyone, but I do think it deserved what it got. Uh, Mr. It's a masterpiece like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, it's a really great game that it's I a empathize good game. with a lot. I don't think it needed all the awards it got. I think that was more. All right. I don't really I don't. I understand it's a great work of fiction, but it could have just been a movie for the most part. Yeah. And the other thing is all the game awards it got for no reason. It got it's some, a game. It's a game. It but they're like, it's award. the best game of the year. No, because there was a plethora of games that were better than that. Which ones? Uh wasn't uh That was twenty twenty. I don't really remember what came out in twenty twenty. There was a lot of good games. Did Sekiro come out in twenty twenty? Yeah, okay. Was, then you, all right. There. Sekiro was hand down my game of the year. Um, I will still fight people. That is the best from software. There's a game. there's a couple other games that came out that year. I think seven came out that year, didn't it? Which one? Seven. Seven. Resident Evil Seven. Oh, Resident Evil Seven. Uh I think that was actually twenty eighteen. We'll have to look that up and we'll come back to that. But all right. We have established where we sit upon Last of Us Last Part of Two. two. Um we're in our last minute of the show, so as we're wrapping up, we're just going to let you know, um, next time we do gaming, hopefully I will have Ghostwire under my belt. And what is the Ghostwire? Ghostwire? Tell me! So we'll have that under wraps, and I'll be able to tell you more about it for once and for all. Good. Uh, have a good night, guys. We will see you in two weeks for the next gaming section. Right, bye. <laughs>